Hey, I'm Steven. Welcome to uh, the May 30th edition of Life As We Know It. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can find me at Stephen Lewis on Air. I've been doing radio for, well, since I got out of college and before and haven't given it up. Uh, jumped into the podcasting world as well because I like to talk. Uh, today's subject is a tough one for me. Pride Month begins tomorrow, and Pride has been in the news a lot lately, and I have a tough time with this one because given my choice of industry, I have friends who are gay. Uh, Some of my dearest friends are gay. I have been around alternative lifestyles uh, for as long as I can remember, and I have always done my damnedest to be as accepting of those lifestyles as I possibly can be Uh, because I've always looked at it as the world has so many bigger problems than who wants to sleep with who or who wants to marry who at the end of the day if you love the other person and it's not hurting anybody else you go do you and that's kind of been my outlook on pride and last year, I got to go to my first ever, surprisingly it's taken this long, uh, but I got to go to my first ever gay wedding. Truly enjoyed it. Had the time of my life. And there were two things that I took away from the ceremony that was gorgeous on a beach in St. Petersburg, Florida. The one thing that I took away was two people who love each other are getting married and committing to spend the rest of their lives together. And at the end of the day, it's what a wedding's about. Two people who love each other committing to spending the rest of their lives together. And I thought it was a really cool and well done ceremony. The other thing that I was worried about, there were people that were not part of the ceremony that were watching on the beach. And all I could think of was, please, for the love of God, do not heckle and ruin their moment. And they didn't, which was awesome as well. So... Pride has been something that has grown tremendously over the last couple of years, and I am someone who does believe that everyone um, deserves to be allowed to be who they are, but I feel like we've kind of started down a slippery slope with some of it. I think that, you know, celebrating your pride, good on you, Um, and I think you should teach your kids to be accepting of all different kinds. That doesn't mean that, you know, you necessarily have to throw it in their face, but I think you should explain, you know, why things are the way they are and that people are different and you just accept people for their differences and there's nothing wrong with that. So let's talk about what's been going on lately, Uh, starting with the Bud Light debacle, because they sent a can, which, you know, I still have a hard time with this one because it was sent, the cans were sent to one social media influencer. It was not a national campaign where they were forced into your local grocery store. They were sent to one influencer. And again, Maybe you know the influencer, maybe you like the influencer, maybe you don't. But at the end of the day, you know, I don't know that it was necessarily, you know, should have caused the backlash that it did. And you get Kid Rock shooting up beer cans, but then turn around and, hey, here's a hundred pictures of Kid Rock with various drag queens and partying with RuPaul. So which side you taking, Bob? The other side of this whole thing is now with today's social media world, what could be directed as one campaign to one small key audience uh, is now seen by way more people than was necessarily intended to see and causes some feathers to ruffle one way or the other. Uh, I don't know that Bud Light is right or wrong to try to grow their business. I'm not in charge of Bud Light or Anheuser-Busch for that matter. But I do think their target was directed a little bit differently. Um, I think that there are some leaps that have been made in certain things. I hate the phrase woke. The whole get woke, go broke. Uh, You know, uh, Disney's struggling a little bit with it in some of their cases. What I don't like that's going on now is 
the force fedness of it all. I think it is good to have things like pride. I think pride is good to be explained, especially to younger people, so you can teach them to be part of a more accepting society. But I think that we have, there's a lot wrong with what's going on. You have parents now who, if their kids are playing dress up, they want them to have surgeries and they haven't even figured out who they are yet. And that's where I kind of draw a bit of a line with it. I know most of us, guys included, when we were kids, you put on a pair of your mom's shoes or you played dress up in some capacity and you turned out however you turned out. And there's nothing wrong with whatever way you turned out. But I think you need to give people time to figure out who they are and not try to influence them one way or the other. You need to let them influence themselves and figure out who they want to be. I have gay friends that say they knew right away and I don't like them any less than the ones who had girlfriends way up through college and then finally realized that they felt a different way. You're not wrong. I think it's an individual choice. And when you know, you as an individual probably know. I don't know what it's like to walk in those shoes. But I think that a lot of a lot of this, it, it almost feels too force fed. And I think the problem that you have when things are force fed is you forget what the message was. And I'll use the Colin Kaepernick thing as an example. When the NFL, um, when Colin Kaepernick knelt during the NFL, his message was a good one because his message was right. There are a lot of problems where race is concerned in this country, but it became more about Colin Kaepernick kneeling and potentially disrespecting the national national anthem that the message and all of that got lost and people got turned off of the message because of the method that was used to promote what his message was and I think he made some mistakes there and I think we're seeing some mistakes being made right now Uh, the one thing with Target being the biggest one right now if you don't know what's going on Target's in some hot water uh, losing a lot of money because of their pride displays and I don't think it's wrong that you had pride clothes. I don't think that's where the problem came in. But they had a pride collection that saw nearly a 14% drop in value of its stock, which basically translates into a $10 billion loss uh, because of their nearly 2,000 stores nationwide. And I think some of the stuff I thought was kind of cool in the sense that if you want to get your kids to, you know, show their pride or support someone who else is showing their pride, the rainbow colored pride dresses and shirts weren't bad. Uh, You know, even the little just be you and feel the love wasn't bad, but I think where you went too wrong was skewing way too young and the tuck friendly swimsuits on display I'm not sure that putting that in a blue collar retail store and causing parents to have conversations that they may not be ready to have is the best idea and what I don't understand from someone with a marketing background is why when they decided that they were going to push this line did no one raise their hand and go hang on should we maybe pivot just a little bit and again I'm not this is not a slam at anybody of the you know gay community that's not what my goal is I just think that maybe someone should have thought a little more clearly about that again I don't think the colors and the pride shirts were bad but I think here's the line oh we just stepped over it and now you feel the consequences and this goes back to what I was saying about you know it feels like everything is being pushed into your face and while that's okay to some people there are others that aren't necessarily ready for that and it's becoming more and more that way in a lot of walks of life when it comes to the things we watch on tv there doesn't need to be a token gay person in every single show 
it's not necessary you know in if it fits and it's in the right show absolutely but now you're going back and you're changing characters and you're messing with people's creation you know if someone created something they created it a certain way it's not for anyone to change unless it's that creator on their own because they are the proprietorship of I can't speak and I'm sorry they're the ones who created they have the right to change it but for a corporation to come around and go ah you know what let's take that animated character that he kind of seemed gay let's make sure we know he's gay now like I don't think that is anyone's right to do you're messing with creation if you want to be more inclusive create new things to involve people and get people more inclusive and marvel has done a fantastic job with spider-man because spider-man is a white guy from new york named peter parker that is spider-man pure and simple he's not gay he's not anything else but what did marvel do hey let's give little black and brown and asian kids someone to look up to so so let's create a completely new Spider-Man that is of color. And now we've given those kids a Spider-Man that they can be proud of and they can look up to without stepping on the 50 plus years of Spider-Man that came before and tarnishing that. Create something new and invite people to the party and be inclusive that way. Don't just throw it in people's faces. And I think that's what's going on now. And you're seeing a lot of people boycott. And some of those boycotters are very absent-minded. Others of them probably feel like everything is being shoved in their face. And I don't think anybody in the gay community should be persecuted for wanting to be who they are. I think, you know, you're entitled to be you. But I saw this interview with a guy who now is a born-again Christian, and he had an interesting thing to say, and it made me think back to, I remember being in high school and even in college, you knew who the Bible study kids were. Uh, there was a time when I was a Bible study kid, and I'm still someone who believes if you are of the youth of the nation and you're lost and can't figure out where to go and you're lonely, go find church because you will find friends and you will find acceptance and that's something that you don't get in a lot of places. But there were the two kinds of Bible study kids that I remember. There were the kinds that, three kinds I should say. There were the kind that were pretend, meaning, you know, oh, we went to church on Sunday, but we were high out of our minds the Saturday night before. And then there were the kind that tried to push their beliefs on everybody else. And then you had the third kind that just lived their lives by example. And maybe you saw something in them that you didn't have in yourself. And I think that's where we're kind of getting to today. If you're going to punish the Christian kids of the world and people for pushing their beliefs on... If we're going to push... If we're going to punish a certain group of people for pushing their beliefs on others, then when it comes to some of these other things... Perhaps we should take a long look in the mirror and figure that out, too. That's what I got today. Uh, let's talk about it. Comment, like, follow, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I'm at Stephen Lewis on air. Uh, and again, like I said, not meant to offend, just to kind of say what's on my head right now, because that is life as we know it. So go spend time with people you like, love, or tolerate, because time is limited. So get out of here.